Get this. Weekday mornings from nine on Triple M. Tim Rogers is co-hosting. Just quickly, best concert, worst concert you've seen, Tim? I think best gig I ever saw was a Beast of Bourbon on the tour that we were playing with them in 93. Right. So, um, <clears throat> and the worst, uh, the one just off the top of my head, I got my nose broken at a cult gig in uh, 19... <laughs> okay. 1987. A, a big chap landed on my nose. Oh, right. <laughs> That'll happen. Yeah. Uh, best concert I reckon was Mr. Iggy Pop. I had a big day out this, this year. Just oh, an expression wow. in my mind. And mm. so scaly. Uh, <laughs> it was just great. Uh, and the worst it was the first concert I ever went to. I was re- really young, and my auntie took me to the Billy Joel Stormfront tour, <laughs> and I was absolutely petrified the whole time because there were these big flags, and, and Billy was smacking this metal thing, and it was just like thunderstorm. I'm scared of storms, wow. and there was thunderstorm noises going everywhere. And then, and then we didn't start the fire started. Oh, oh like, look. This, is this music? I don't want in. I'm out. <laughs> Did he come on w- waving a big flag just before singing Piano Man? Or? No, but there was someone at the back waving the big Stormfront. Um, uh, flag. The flag at the back. Oh, it was wow. terrifying. Okay, I Did saw uh, to your good one. I saw Talking Heads doing oh, the stuff. the Stop Making Sense good show, stuff. the exact one from the movie, in the middle of a field full of mud in New Zealand at the Sweetwaters yes. Festival. And uh, David Byrne was really pissed off. It was raining, and he did every song angry. He just did an angry <laughs> version of every song. You know, just that one. This must be the place where he dances with no. the uh, the lamp. And he just got really shut off and threw the lamp into the audience. And bad concert? It was bad concert. I actually went and saw Howard Jones in Brisbane <laughs> back in, when I was working for <laughs> FM 104, now known as Triple M in Brisbane. I would you <laughs> like to get to know you well. It was a station promotion. I had to be there. I was giving things out of the back of a van. I'll give you 56 bucks and a latte for a, for a photo of you at that gig. <laughs> I don't think there was so any evidence, but if there was, I probably looked like Howard Jones. I probably had pirate pants on. <laughs> I'd like to get to know you well. <laughs> Errol is first. Hi, Errol. You there, Errol? Errol, I would do anything just to be with you. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. Well, tell us your best and worst concert, mate. Well, the best concert has to be in excess. Uh, the kick tour, oh, um, nice. Michael Hutchins was just sensational and just magnetic. Nice. Tony, I, I, I'll I, see your uh, your Howard Jones and I'll raise you a Rick Astley. Oh, Rick Astley. <laughs> Never going to give you up. Well, <laughs> i tell you what, he, he, he was wearing his suit, doing his little jiggy, and then he jumped behind a giant white screen, uh, at which point they put on a movie of a shadow doing backflips and somersaults oh. that came out the other side. <laughs> it was sensational. I'm just amazed that there was a concert. There was, and I paid money for it. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and any idea where Rick Astley is now? Uh, uh, no. Employee of the month? <laughs> Probably. Well, Toilets I, are us. <laughs> I don't know if we can go worse than that. Hello, Joe. Finally, how are Hello, you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Your best concert was Rod Stewart in the early '80s. And your worst? Rod Stewart in the early '90s. <laughs> <laughs> Cal Wilson is our co-host this morning. Yesterday we were talking about you know the Socceroos won. They did. I was out. I was there in Taree in a small brick motel, screaming my lungs out. Well, I'm sure they appreciated the support. <laughs> because and I was watching the soccer, by the way. Just right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not just for fun no. or a stir. <laughs> well, you know, I was complaining that at the end of the game, you know, what I want is a slow motion replay of the highlights set to inspirational music, mm. and instead they cut to like rally rashes and Ned Zelich, you know, arguing about space usage. Uh, but yesterday, last night, they replayed some of it and they got me back, Tony. What have they done? Well, they started the slow-mo and I thought, here we go. And I turned up the TV only to be alarmed by hearing, I love you. <laughs> and there he was, Chad Paddlepop Line <laughs> Kruger out front of Nickelback, ruining the footage for the nation. It could have been worse. What? It could have been that semi father <laughs> shade. I would have preferred, I'd like to get to know you well. Oh, now Jones. <laughs> That'll be enough of that. They're doing things to get me interested in football. Oh, yeah. Firstly, football is inspiring people to dance at 7-Elevens at 6 in the morning, so Absolutely. I'm getting interested. Yeah. Now there's a country with a... What, what's that new country? Oh, Togo. Togo. That's a real country, Togo. <laughs> it sure is. And uh, it's not like the Ukraine, a made-up country <laughs> for the internet. Togo sounds like something like a, a clothing feature. You know, like you don't have buttons, you have Togos <laughs> instead. That's where they come from. Yeah. They're all wearing Togos. <laughs> <laughs> Who's their coach? Uh, the, the coach of Togo had their first game in the World Cup finals ever last night. Mm. This young German man called Otto Fister. Otto Fister. <laughs> I want full details from you, Ed Cavalier, yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. in Germany, because you're heading off at the end of this Friday, week. Friday, constant Fister updates. <laughs>
and the full Otto Fister story Absolutely will right. be enacted on this program. He rules with an iron fister. Here's what happened to me this morning. I'm sitting in this cafe looking through the AS. paper trying to think of uh, bits for the show. I like, I like your sound effects of the newspaper. Yeah. It's real newspaper, folks. I can see it. It's the secret sound. Um, but I'm sitting there and there's a table next to me for two people. Yep. And this enormous woman's come in and tried to move, you know, a third chair in. Oh, and yeah. she's around the side. And her huge solar eclipse causing ass <laughs> is on my table to the point where it's actually touching my toast. That's crossing a line, I think. Are it's you nudging. Your bottom touched your toast. It was nudging my breakfast. And Maddie you're trying to swallow some... your breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. And I've thought, I've got to say something. Yeah. So I've, this is what's come out of my mouth. Oh, no. How pathetic is this? I won't pretend that this isn't confronting. <laughs> That's what I've said. Said non sequitur man. <laughs> and she's looked around and she's gone, you're a very rude little man. Oh. A it, very rude little man. I'm going, fair enough. She's obviously heard the program. Fair enough. But then she's gone too far. What did you say? She's looked down at the newspaper I've got open uh, and she's gone, you're worse than him. Who? And you know who the paper was open at? I don't know. Who? Victoria's sex witch. Robin Fletcher. Really? I'm sure people have seen him. He's He kind of looks a bit like Daniel Kitson gone to seed, <laughs> if you've seen his work. Is that that is going too far. Way too far. I may be a rude little man, but no. I'm not some pervy wiccan. No, not at all. Uh, Hilary Duff, has, oh, yes. uh, you may have seen her the enormous deuce. piano key teeth that she's had installed. Mm. Show me. She's had those, they're called veneers. <laughs> they're known as chiglet teeth. Really? In America, because they look like chiglets. That's a chiglet. She's gone about. It's, it's like like a, like a tic tac or a piece of chewing gum. Oh, thank you. An yep. enormous white thing that resembles a tooth, but larger. Gotcha. But she's obviously gone in for like seven sizes too big. <laughs> Had the wrong ones installed. But why would she need that? Why would she need new teeth? I don't know. Because it, they were necessary. Because her old teeth kept chipping on microphones. <laughs> <laughs> It's like she's got no small motor skills or something like that. She just keeps whacking herself in the mouth while she's singing. Singing. Okay. Oh, uh, then, of course, the other big story in the women's mags is Kirsty Alley's secret fast food binges. Secret? We're well, not very secret because there's photos of them in, in every mag. But what I love is, have a look at this, Cal. That is last week's new idea. There's Kirsty Alley looking fairly mm. slim. Yes, oh. One and hot. week later in the new weekly... Jabba the Hutt. That's true. She's, and it says, packed on 20 kilos. All just under a chin. <laughs> <laughs> How She's many? just got a goiter, the poor it's woman. It's a flesh-coloured neck brace. <laughs> hey. How many burgers do you need to eat in one week, Ed Cavalli? Yeah, to put on 20 kilos. To put on that much challenge, weight. That is a challenge I'm willing to take. And listen to this. After munching on the mega meal, oh, yes. Ali apparently drove straight to a nearby health spa for a body-cleansing colonic. <laughs> Now, let's not bother with how they know that. <laughs> right. Insider. An insider at the arse really, clinic. Really, really insider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's how it works. In one end and then out the other straight away. But it hasn't worked because, as you say, flesh-coloured neck brace. <laughs> Here's what they've uh, got in the, the United States of America. Oh, they've yes. got a restaurant in New York that won't serve you mm. unless you can speak English. <laughs> how well? <laughs> How do, well do, do I have, have to, to speak big? English? <laughs> well, there's a big row over it, and uh, here's an excerpt from the news last night. If I go to Mexico, they're not lined up at the border translating things in English for me. It's a sentiment which is gaining support across America. The U.S. Senate recently passed a motion making English the official national language, and President George W. Bush declared anyone who wants to become a citizen should be made to learn English. Right. So George Bush says that anyone who... Mm. Who can't speak English. Can't be in America. He right. shouldn't be really throwing any stones, should, should he? Can we have, a, have we got a clip of uh, George Bush there, Mr. Marsland? We do not want the Iranians to have a nuclear weapon, <laughs> the capacity to make a nuclear weapon, or the knowledge as to how to make a nuclear weapon. Take some lessons! <laughs> Take some lessons, and then you can eat some food. <laughs> What about that woman at the beginning of that story? Let's hear her again. If I go to Mexico, they're not lined up at the border translating things in English for me. Do you reckon that woman even knows where Mexico is? No. 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 She would know where the buffet is <laughs> and maybe where the remote is. I, I think she would know how to sit in someone's breakfast is what you're saying. That's what you're saying. <laughs> not in my breakfast. I'm no sex Wiccan lady. 
Sorry if you've just tuned in. That'll be baffling. <laughs> <laughs> baffling to me. Um, here's, speaking of not speaking English, this was on Current Affair on Monday night. It was a box of damning evidence. It has been one big lie. Her marriage was in shatters. Her marriage was in shatters? Is that English? Yes. Your marriage can be in tatters and your marriage can be shattered. Yes. But how can your marriage be in shatters? <laughs> That's not a sentence. It's up Shat Creek now. The old, the old We've marriage. all been shat off by a current affair. <laughs> that would make sense. Things we haven't got to. For example, man eats 47 cheese sandwiches in 10 minutes. Not bad. That's a big one. Last year, this bloke, Joey Chestnut, <laughs> ate 50 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Oh, yeah? Now he's eating 47 grilled cheese sandwiches. People wonder why grilled the world cheese. hates the United States. <laughs> Look how many sandwiches we've got and one bloke's eating them all. <laughs> now, is it, what are our chances of getting an interview with him, do you think? Because I'd love to know whether he just opens his throat and, like, hands and basically places... <laughs> Cheese sandwiches into his stomach. Have you tried that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I would like to. I reckon the toast would be sore on the way down. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, and you know, the chances of a large woman sitting on the end of your sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened to me. Yeah. Woman sat on my breakfast, accused me of being a sex wiccan. <laughs> if you've just tuned in. Uh, I've got a, a headline here. Uh, Chappelle Corby's sister has had her teeth filed. <laughs> Donating the uh, what's left over to Hillary Duff, which is nice. <laughs> so, what has she filed them under? <laughs> Disturbing. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I've, I've got a headline. Yes. Rugby match mistaken for brawl. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Russians playing a game of amateur rugby have been arrested by police who mistook the match for a mass brawl. That's they arrested nearly a hundred people and took them all to the local police station. Then it says they were released without charge when officers realised they had been playing rugby. <laughs> They just couldn't identify rugby. No, they, maybe charts. they thought the ball was like someone's head that had been torn off. Or <laughs> is that what's going to be going on over there, Eddie? You'd say, you know what you're doing over there? Man, I'm cool. You got a bodyguard or something? No, no, I've just got the international language of pointing and smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Choose your time to do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's a headline. Yeah. Paris Hilton, a horrible cow. <laughs> Don't believe it. Our Queensland listeners know what I'm talking about. Two years no. after a well-publicised visit to Queensland charity Paradise Kids, the millionaire heiress has apparently broken a promise she made to seriously help seriously ill children and their families. Hilton pledged to organise a star-studded benefit. And this is what she said. I'll get a few friends together. I know the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> and never did it. Never organised it. No benefit concert has ever taken place. Efforts by Paradise Kids to contact Hilton have been unsuccessful. <laughs> um, and what else? She Oh, listen to this. It makes it even worse. Three months after her visit, a national magazine reported that Hilton had declared the charity received 500 grand in checks as a result of the public exposure she had given it. Not, Not true at all. Oh. And now people think, oh, they've got enough money. We don't need to give them any money because Paris Hilton's raised all that money. So Paradise Kids do need money and Paris Hilton not helping, although she has pledged to donate 25% of the proceeds of her next bout of slutty internet fellatio to the needy <laughs> Queensland children and their families. <laughs> Josh Lawson is our co-host this morning. Have you got one for us I there, do, Josh? I do. Listen, um, uh, there is a restaurant in uh, called Mulligan's in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, a couple of classic burgers that are under investigation by the American Nutritional Board. Uh, one is called the ham dog, which is a half pound of hamburger meat wrapped around a hot dog, which Whoa. is then deep fried and served on a hoagie topped with chili, bacon, and a fried egg. <laughs> okay. One free defibrillator with every burger sold. <laughs> <Yeah>. Free gurney. <laughs> Ed Cavalier is drooling. I want one. <laughs> He's got the glass fangs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's quite a burger. The uh, I, was, I had a friend of mine in um, in England tell me that they did a um a, a meat analysis mm -hmm. on his, on the on the kebabs in his town to find out which animals uh, went into the meat for the kebab. Yes, the winner, the largest amount from one animal on twenty two percent was seagull. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? I said, how were they? He goes, now that I think about it, they did taste a bit birdish. Yeah. <laughs> It, um, it makes me feel guilty that occasionally I'll throw a bit of a kebab to a seagull on the beach. <laughs> it just feels that, wrong. <laughs> it's hey, uh, Tone, your, um, your countrymen mm. are a little bit upset because uh, uh, you guys gave a whole bunch of really nice stuff 
to the uh, to the monarchy to to England, and uh, the, they've decided to pay you back by flogging them off. <laughs> How did we give? <laughs> Have a guess. You gave away some silver kiwis. Oh, a yeah. pair of silver kiwis. A couple of Dave and, Dobbin albums. Yes, but, <laughs> but, the, but the kiwis were in the form of a kebab. So. <laughs> so what do you mean they flogged them off and they had a garage sale? You gave them the Princess Margaret, right? And Princess Margaret's going, oh, thank you. Oh, silver kiwi. Put these in the garage sale. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Great. Well, what about this? Kate Moss has got a black eye. <laughs> White nose. Every- <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will be wearing that look. Yeah. Now, now the case got it. She's got a mystery black eye. No one knows what caused wow. it. Maybe someone threw a rock at her and she didn't have time to inhale it for it, <laughs> it hit her in the face. <laughs> All right. Do we want the listeners to join in the yes. fun? Please. Oh, wait, wait, I've got one more before, Let's hear before we it. go. Fister to sue Togo <laughs> FA. <laughs> Otto Iron Fister, uh, <laughs> coach of Togo, is incensed that there's a there's a pay dispute going on, and uh, he's been drawn into it. That's it. So he's going to sue when he gets out of the, when he finishes the World Cup. And if anyone wants to have a look at uh, Otto Iron Fister, coach of Togo in the World Cup, yes, he's the one sitting on the sideline that looks like a Russian boxing promoter. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Open open silk shirts, gold yeah. chains. Wow. Yeah. And is that the standard look for you, people from Togo? No, it's just a standard look for anyone whose name is Fister, I think. <laughs> and you're going to track him down, aren't you, in yeah. Germany? It's a, yeah, constant Fister update. We <laughs> have the first <laughs> exclusive Fister Did you interview. say Fister updates? <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry, <laughs> just checking. Just checking. <laughs> Jane Kennedy is with us. Yes. Um, celebrity spotting. I had a bit of a, oh, yes. um, when oh, I was away, yes. I was at a restaurant and um, there was a bit of a flurry going on. And I saw this sort of um, woman, very, very skinny, skinny, tiny woman in this oversized poochy dress for all our female <laughs> listeners. Yes. We know what a poochy dress is. And like lots of hairspray, but very fine hair and a really painted on face. And it was June Collins. Charge. June Collins. And her actually really quite good looking, much younger husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Par for the course. Well, but seriously, I'm looking at him going, <laughs> what are you thinking? And they, they it's... strolled into this restaurant and they sat down in a group and she bought out of her bag a mobile phone and was showing it off to everyone. And it was the mobile phone that Posh and Bex had given her at a party they'd had. Right. And they'd given out all the celebrities that they have a party every year and it was their World Cup party. And uh, Joan must have gone. Every celebrity in Britain went. And as a gift, they all got a free mobile phone with their name engraved on it. Whoa. Love from Posh and Bex. And here she was, this woman. What do you think she's got in her lifetime, you know? <laughs> so much stuff. <laughs> and she's bragging about a bleeding mobile phone with her name on it from Posh and Bex. Who wow. Makes calls and everything. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But she was, it was her pride and joy. <laughs> she came she? out uh, to Australia a few years ago to, mm. to, to some book launch or something, and my wife went along, and she said that there was lighting all the way from the curb oh, into yeah. the hotel, yeah. and there was a path where she had to walk to where she sat down, and it was lit, like with movie <laughs> lights. And I she believe couldn't, it. couldn't get off the path because it was so that her face would look a certain way. From well, I think I'm haunted by her because I keep running right. into her in bizarre places, and I... I followed her through an airport another time because I thought, who's that creepy tiny lady in front of me? <laughs> and it was her. And then I was on a plane and the hostess said, I said, one day, I mean, sorry, the flight attendant. And I said, oh, who's the most revolting celebrity you've ever had on the flight? <laughs> <laughs> Thinking she went, oh, I can't realise. And I said, oh, you don't have to. And she goes, oh, no, I'll tell you, Joan Collins. Is that right? <laughs> and I said, one, she goes, oh, she got smashed. Oh, no, allegedly, she got <laughs> smashed. <laughs> <laughs> it was like she was so rude to everyone and was just a nightmare. We couldn't wait till she got off the plane. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, Jane seems to have bumped into Joan Collins, what, two or three times? Mm. Or the creepy lady. She likes <laughs> yeah, <to>. absolutely. <laughs> I think that makes you a pal. You're a pal. At oh. the very least, you're an observer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. I feel honoured. You're a celebrity insider. <laughs> I am. We're obsessed with the celebrity insiders, Jane, the ones mm. that they get for the Who magazine. As you know, Brangelina, <laughs> yep. they had a baby in a, a, a sealed room with one other person, <laughs> and yet hundreds and hundreds of celebrity insiders are getting all the details out to yes. the press. Yeah, they're friends of the source and the, you know, the celebrity source, all mm. those people, yeah. Insiders reveal that Angelina wasn't prepared for the emotional upheaval 
struggle of giving birth and had no idea how demanding a newborn baby could be. She has plenty of experience with infants. After all, she is mum to young Maddox and Zahara, but never realised how much work goes into looking after a newborn. Yeah. What kind of person uses the word newborn <laughs> and infants in a sentence? Celebrity insiders. Yeah. And the photos, are they faked or are they real? Or? I love those faked photos. We, right. should, we should get into that tone. Is that the one where she money. was breastfeeding, yeah. a big, fake breastfeeding lady? There's big money to be made in fake photographs. But of... I think I've I've seen on the news some of those. They're so predictable what those Brad and Angelina photos are going to be like, aren't they? You know, yeah, they'll be lying yeah, in, on yes. white sheets yes. and cupping the baby's yeah. head and bottom yeah. and they'll be lovingly looking. You know, Just that's a, probably not that's really true. what happens. I'll give you the tip. <laughs> it's not what it looks like. Hey, Tone, so one of the, uh, the uh, you know, um, Tomcat, yeah. mm. uh, you know. Oh, what's sorry happening? What's happening with Katie? Tell me. Oh, well, she's not happy, according to the photographs and so and sources. <laughs> according uh, to the photos, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Not happy. And, uh, she, and this is the thing I like. The sources have taken it to a new level because now they're getting plugs in their quotes. Uh, <laughs> a source says, and she wants to send a message to Tom that she's young and wants a life. She's definitely not some desperate housewife sitting at home wat- waiting for her man to call the shots. But don't forget, desperate housewife, yeah. 830 <laughs> on Channel 7. Set an insider. Yeah. I wow. just am, I'm very disturbed that Katie's continually being dragged off to those children's soccer matches. <laughs> I mean, come yes. on. I'm just, I can't believe we're using words like Tomcat and Brangelina. Benefer. Benefer. What if Snatogaro <laughs> hooked up with Jennifer Garner? Would he be Snatifer? Okay. Hope so. Just lost everybody. Sorry yeah, about right, that. Yep. Sorry. Uh, there's so much we don't have time to get to. Uh, Charlie Sheen's sex toy. Oh, Sheen, Sheen Watch. Sheen Watch. Uh, Charlie Sheen's young child discovered a whole bunch of uh, rubber Oops. sex toys amongst his father's possessions. Uh, Denise Richards and her daughter were at Charlie's home while he attended an AA meeting. <laughs> Sam pulled some towels from her dad's wardrobe and a large pair of rubber buttocks <laughs> fell to the floor. Am I behind the times That's or so... someone bunging on a pair of rubber buttocks? Rubber buttocks? What does why that do? Why would that turn you on? I don't know. Call in. Uh, <laughs> Tell us why. Uh, we want any celebrity information that you've got. There's so much. Are we way over time already? All right. I'll put it on the spike. A uh, dovetail. Oh, dovetail. No. Uh, the dovetail today is I was thinking about the uh, the marriage of the dogs and yes. I, I those uh, mm. those human interest stories at the end of the news. Yes. yes. Like, a, you know, like a panda's had a baby uh, or like a, a baby panda. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> but my favourite, my favourite human interest is when one species of animal is friends with another one, oh, yeah, you know, and the good. duck thinks he's a cat, oh, you know, yes, and there's like a... been brought up together. I right? love that stuff. The monkey <laughs> and the elephant are carpooling together. Exactly. <laughs> so if you've got a, and also as a dovetail, if you'd like, tell us your favourite uh, human interest story. Right. <laughs> okay. Are Celebrities any... sound juicier. Uh, are any... <laughs> The phone's ringing it all, Nikki. No. Uh, hundreds for Richard E. Grant. Back to the confusing dovetails. Nothing. Gone Hello, online. Peter. Hello, how are you going? Good, mate. What you got for us? Mate, we're just like I was thinking, yeah, kids at school change the first letter with your, the first letter of your surname ah, and come yes. up with a funny name. Mm-hmm. Yes. Brad Pitt's daughter, isn't it Shiloh? That's yeah, right. Yeah. So wouldn't that be pile of sh... <laughs> I think so. <laughs> You know, oh, that they, poor they, child. They got every website under the sun, but they forgot that. I'm going to go and register that. Triple <laughs> w. I just love the way you've censored yourself yeah, there, well too. Yeah, well done. Oh, that's well, not bad, is that it? That was self-censoring. Well yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, I'm impressed. And happy birthday, too. Oh, thank you very much. Hey. How old are you, 21? Oh, hello. hello. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Peter, what's yeah? your human interest story that you like? <laughs> oh, no. I have. I've seen a couple of women cyclists together at Olympic <laughs> Games. Oh, that's suspicious. That'll do. There you go. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> okay, hello, next? David. Hello, Ed. How are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? Say hello to everyone else. Uh, hello, everyone else. There you go. <laughs> Hi, David. What do you got for us? Uh, I actually was in uh, a place called Lady Luck in the Cross one night, and a lady... <laughs> oh, yeah, well... In King's Cross? Yeah. 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 And uh, a lady came in and said, do you mind shuffling down on the couch? Someone's got to sit down. I said, okay, no worries. And I turned around. It was Chad Kroger, your famous, your favourite celebrity. Oh, from Nickelback. Nickelback, Nickelback man. Oh, yeah. And uh, did you talk to him? Yeah, I actually ended up getting drunk with him for about four hours, and the man's a tight ass. Is he? <laughs> yeah, he is. And, and does he talk the way he sings? 
Uh, no, he didn't scream at me the whole yeah. time. On and on about paperback novels. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he would have had a tab at the bar or something he could no, have hooked on to. Well, well, he might have, but I bought him a couple of drinks and oh, the paper mate. wasn't returned. So. Oh, I knew it. I knew yes. it. Shocker. Now, tell me, David, your uh, favourite human interest oh, story. Well, You're still persisting with this, Ed. Uh, yep. I used to have a uh, Cavalier <sighs> King Charles Cass- Spaniel. I had two. I- I had they're two fe- of those. Yeah, yeah, they're feather and fur dogs, and we also had a little cockatiel. Yeah. Um, they used to just hang out together. There you go. That's <laughs> yeah. exactly what... Wow, the dovetail's paying off. How bizarre is that? Wow. No, it's cute. It's cute. <laughs> cute. Oh, that's nice. They're so fluffy. We like to balance the King's Cross sleaziness <laughs> with the fluffy animals. Uh, hello, Rod. Hi there. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Happy birthday, birthday girl. Thanks, Rod. <laughs> What do you uh, What do you got for us, mate? Well, look, I'm concerned. You can't always believe everything you read in the print media. You guys always tell the truth, of course. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and I'm just worried that Charlie Sheen's getting a bum rap here. And before oh, yeah. we make any sort of jump jump to any conclusions on that uh, that pair of rubber buttocks, <laughs> um, you know, uh, could they have been a therapeutic device or, oh. or an enhancement product? Oh um, yes, we're quick. We're we quick to judge, right? Uh, as to whether there was any sort of um, um, look, I can't say it any other way. Was there any hole in the pair of rubber uh, buttons? Oh, I don't, well, strange. that would be... Sorry. Because clearly, if, the, if there wasn't, it would be innocent and harmless. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big difference, yeah. and you've pointed it Rod, out to us, Rod. <laughs> Rod, thank you. Because you know, we were too quick to judge that Charlie Sheen Correct. was seedy for we hiding don't... rubber buttocks behind towels. No time his... for a dovetail, I'm afraid, Ed. <laughs> oh, I, we're I... getting the wind up. Hello, Dan. Hey, guys. How are you going? Good, mate. What have you got for us? Good. I have celebrity photos. <laughs> of who? Of Jane Kennedy. Oh, stop oh, is that it. right? Who is that? Dan, are they up on the internet yet? What's the address? <laughs> What's the www? <laughs> I'll post them on the net. Where, oh, where, don't you uh, dare. What are they? You're, you're at my birthday party when we are about eight years old. That's oh, great. And what's yeah. she doing? Dan, did you go to Terry Street Kinder? No, uh, no. You, your grandparents lived across the road from me. Oh, yes. Yeah. Dan and Becky. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and what's happening uh, in these photos? I'm very I, happy that I'm eight years old, Dan, because I was going to say, if I was 22, mm, uh, my friends yeah, made me but, do some very unusual things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my, um, it's very 70s, so you've got the lapels on and the white stockings. And uh, oh, and we, I'm probably we, very porky from memory. Yeah, uh, I'm not really. I had a major crush on you and you rejected me. Oh, there you go. don't tell me that now, Dan. <laughs> um, <laughs> You should see me now. No, you shouldn't see me now. <laughs> You'll get over it. <laughs> I've been spurred by a celebrity. There you go. Wow. Hey, Dan, uh, just quickly, human interest story that you like? <gasps> I Just like the other, uh, like similar to the other guy, I have, I have a cockatiel yes. who, who likes to cuddle up to my dog. Oh, yeah. oh, it's rife. And you know they can get married now. <laughs> so I heard. Yeah. That's legal in Australia. <laughs> What about Lockie Hume? He can we get another round of applause from that special magic button you've got? Oh, no, nobody gets much. two rounds, do they? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they do now, Martin. <laughs> they do now. There is a poll in the papers today uh, about inspirational movies. What are yeah. the most inspirational movies of all time? Uh, the, the, to- the first one will be like Rocky. No, well, Rocky's number four. Oh. You've got It's a Wonderful Life. That film sucks. Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> sucks. And, and then, dude, where's my car? I don't know how that's <laughs> happened. <laughs> now, now we're talking. <laughs> Schindler's now. List. Are you going to say that sucks, Lockie? No, no. Schindler, <laughs> I don't know how Schindler's List could be inspirational. Well, Three hours of concentration camp footage and people are inspired. Yeah, but there's a fair bit of triumph. Well, yeah, not really. I mean, it's, I would say Schindler's List is one of the most brilliant, moving mm. films of all time, but inspirational. I'm inspired by Schindler's List. I mean, Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. What should be on the list? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a Wonderful Life. I remember there was a fantastic, because we know It's a Wonderful Life. Bloke's about to jump off a bridge and kill himself. Angel comes down and mm. shows him what the world would have been mm. like if he hadn't existed. Mm. And there's a fantastic comedy sketch in the mm. Fry and Laurie show. You know, yeah, Stephen Fry, Fry and, Laurie. Hugh, Laurie. and Hugh Laurie, Dr. House, yep. where uh, Hugh Laurie plays Rupert Murdoch, and he's oh, about yeah. to jump off a bridge. And the angel comes down and says, I'll show you what the world would have been like if you hadn't existed. Yeah. And he takes him around England and takes him into a pub where there's no TVs on up in the corner <laughs> and black and white people are playing chess together. <laughs> and it's, it's fantastic and peaceful and beautiful. Everyone loves each other. And Rupert Murdoch goes, this is fantastic. There's so much cash to be made here. <laughs> and then the angel just pushes him off the bridge himself. There you go. So that, well, that was an inspirational yeah. moment for me. 
But uh, what do you think, Tony? Inspirational yeah, what, what's movies? an inspirational film for you? I'm going to go with White Water Summer again. Ah, <laughs> with Kevin Bacon. <laughs> I'll go. Can't get past it. We had a lot of people call up say, what was that film uh, where the bloke said he wanted the finest wines available to humanity? Oh, it yes. was, of course, With Nil and I. Oh, favourite oh, film. Yes. Spelt With Nail and I, if you're yep. looking for it at the video shop. That inspires me. Best. Just every line is a zinger. It inspires a lot of alcoholics, Tony. What about you, Ed? What <laughs> uh, are... I'm going to go with La Bamba today. Really? <laughs> Really? Yeah, 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 because it inspires, you know, a kid from the wrong side of the tracks to follow your heart, you know? Well, Scarface does that for me. <laughs> you see? And heaven tonight Similar in its own way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's bring in, uh, I don't think we've uh, got enough opinions on this program, yep. so let's get ourselves a full bench. Let's introduce the work experience guys here uh, at yes. Triple M. A round of applause, if you would, for Ben and Max. Thank you. Morning, boys. You Thank guys you. have been uh, at the station all week. What have you observed? Uh, it's been pretty good. You know, we've been all around the place, really, just seeing, uh, you know, w- what we do and uh, how... You don't have to be nice. What, no. have they, what have they no, had you doing? Just, I'm just a little confused. Okay, I'm just a little confused. I thought Cavalier was the work experience. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's on. Have they given you free stuff? Uh, no. No, it's been pretty stingy. <laughs> Done Obviously, you've been done by the so-called king of prizes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there'll be have Nickelback you... tickets on the way out the door, kids. <laughs> now, you guys have your own radio show, do you not? No, not me. I do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Sorry, Max, Community, you do? Community radio. And do you do movie stuff on that show? Uh, yeah, we do uh, Yeah, a couple of odd movie reviews here and there. And what would you describe as an inspirational movie? I'd have to say Jack with Robin Williams. Oh, oh man. Why? I was just saying before, that's that that film was one of the four signs of the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. That proved that Coppola will never regain the genius that he had when he did the Godfather films. It was the Yeah, but film. think about it. I mean, you know, the guy's like, uh, what is? it's a kid in like a 40-year-old man's body. I mean, it, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it gives you inspiration to sort of get out there and sort of not, you know, let your physical status sort of, you know, uh, MP or hold you back. Yes. There you go. It, pretty much that's how it was pitched in Hollywood and it got the same reaction it got from us just then. It, it was pitched <laughs> as... They let's... went ahead and made it anyway, didn't <laughs> no, they? No, they said... They pitched it like this. They said, let's do a remake of Big, which was, of oh, course, yes. a remake of Dream a Little Dream with yes. the Corys, which was, of course, a remake of 18 again, which Whoa. was, of course, a remake of Like Father, Like Son. It goes on and on back <laughs> through history. What about you, Ben? What, what would you like to see as an uh, inspirational movie? Um, this is dead air you're using up, kids, so make it good. <laughs> Um, I am Sam. Oh, oh it's sure. hey, hey, actually, that, that might be that might be on this Word. list here. That was and, good. At the ever reliable Herald Sun, who have <laughs> compiled this list. Um, it's an Oscar nominee for Sean Penn. I yes, think it, was. it was. There you go. All he right. got cheated out by um Denzel Washington for Training Day. No, he that's deserved that. I actually think that's one of the best awarded Oscars ever. Period. Well, no, yep, I think absolutely. Max Max is onto something though, because of course that was one of the few films where somebody didn't have a physical impairment. Or, <laughs> that's uh, right. <laughs> there you go. No, it's corruption, which obviously, is, which holding is, him back. Which is another reason why it was such a great win for the Oscars. That for Denzel Washington, I've never met the guy, but I have friends who know him right. who have have told me that he is that character. From Training Day. Is he really? That so he is just insane like that. He can, when he arcs up at people, like literally, remember the banging the guns together? Yeah. And do, yep, mm. Apparently he does that in restaurants. Uh, That's well, what wow. I've heard. And I heard Carries much... guns, bangs them together in restaurants. That's what I've heard. <laughs> Don Knotts, <laughs> much the same every day. Who <laughs> we got on the line? My David, how are you? Uh, great guys, yourself? Very well, mate. What are you saying? What's your inspirational film? Mate, I reckon if Obama gets in, mm. then Footloose has got to be in. Oh, Fair Footloose. Enough. There you go. One man dancing his way through the red tape of a small town. <laughs> <laughs> Taking on the evil John Lithgow, armed only with a you know a box step. That's great. And uh, do you do you like that scene where they kind of they break all the rules by dancing through the warehouse? Mate, I think it's the most frightening film I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. We're not doing horror movies, mate. We're doing inspirational. Ben and Max, do you know Footloose? Uh, I've heard of it. That's Kenny Loggins, right? It yeah. is Kenny Loggins. Yeah, and Kevin Bacon as well. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, a full bench. Uh, <laughs> hello, Graham. <laughs> Morning. How you going, man? What do you got? What? I've got Red Dawn. Oh, oh, every time we talking. do this, every time we get another Patrick Swayze title it's, for it's the Mantelpiece. Based, this is really the Swayze show, isn't it? It's Every <laughs> Swayze film is going to pop a mention by hey, the Gra- time we're done. Graham, for those of us, uh, or those out there who don't know Red Dawn, quick, quick synopsis. Uh, the Russians and the Central American communists invade America and Patsy Swayze Turn them all back. <laughs> now, is, hey, now is, is Charlie Sheen in this film, or is, am I mistaken about that? I think Charlie Sheen's in it, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, 
can't he's, remember. He's the bloke with the rubber buttocks. No, he is, he is in it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's inspiring. Thanks so much, Hal. They're all there. Yeah. Now, what was inspirational about it for you, Graham? Oh, well, yeah, a small band of wolverines hiding in the in the center in the center of America can turn back the entire Russian army. There's a little bit of that right. in, a lesson for all of us. That yeah. is true. That is true. Wolverines? Can we just go back? A small <laughs> band of wolverines. Is that some kind of gun nut talk? <laughs> where, where... No, that's that, that's their local football team. Ah. All right. Ah. And, and this comprises C. Thomas Howell, the soul man, <laughs> Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen. Well, with a, with, and a pair of rubber buttocks. <laughs> the world yeah. is in safe hands. Uh, Who else is you. inspiring hey, Michael, us? how are you? Yeah, good, thanks, guys. Good, mate. What's your inspirational film? The Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah. that's sensational. Just, uh, inspiring you to uh, not like quit your job and lie around the house all day? That's right. Walk around in your pyjamas and dressing ground and uh, drink your beverage. <laughs> so many great scenes. Which is your favourite? Oh, probably the one where he gets thrown in the back of the limousine and he says, hey, there's a beverage involved here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all gold. What about when uh, Jesus appears? John Turturro. Oh, Oh, he's great. He must be on screen for, what, about 15 seconds? Yeah. And then he just steals, steals the whole film. Steals yeah, the whole movie. With the bowling shirt and everything, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Lebowski. Uh, and please, a sequel. One yeah, of a series of films for the dude. Very good and idea. If there can be five, six Rockies. Mm. Why, not, why, why not? not? And why not try and get Gutenberg and Swayze oh, together in a, a film? Idea. That's what I'm thinking because that's the kind of stuff that inspires Actually, me. When I'm know, flicking through Variety and I read the names Gutenberg or Swayze, but I reckon whew, if, if I was if I was the Red Army and I was going to invade somewhere, just the sight of the Goot and and the Swayze <laughs> standing on the shores, mm. I'd just turn around and go straight oh, back. I would too. In <laughs> fact, I did. Well, I, the, I, the, the reason the, my whole aborted mission to invade America. Fell on its on its rubber buttocks <laughs> because of the goo. <laughs> because of the goo. Let's go back to Serpico mm. because Serpico to me is my favourite film. When people ask me, you know, why can you get this on DVD in Australia? Why can't you get that? Did you know you cannot get Serpico on DVD in Australia? Yeah, I, my copy of it I had to order from the states. You can get She's Out of Control with Tony Danza. Awesome. <laughs> you can get King Ralph. You, can, you cannot get Serpico. You, can, you cannot get Nashville. Well, you can get Air Bud and Air Bud 2 How's that? In, a, in a box hey, set. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't know there was an Air Bud 2. It's oh, brilliant. My is it goodness. the same dog? I think the dog from Air Bud 1 actually died. Yeah, he was put down. Oh, no. Down, yeah. Not in the film, obviously. He, he went the way oh, of Oh, no, it's a deleted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he went the same way as all of the cats and dogs out of the adventures of Milo and Otis. Apparently, there's some horrific there's so number many. of cats and dogs. That's true. That they changed the color. That film. Oh. They ch- Man, there are kids listening to this. Oh. You know that? The that cat jumps into it. My nephew was listening to this. Oh. In a creek, and yeah. then and then, yes. and then suddenly they come to another angle, and it's a completely different <laughs> colored cat going, what over there? <laughs> it's shonky. But back to Serpico. Here's the other thing about Serpico, is that the, you can buy it on video here, obviously, yes. and it is the dubbed version. All the swearing, all the swearing. Has, and Pacino apparently was so anti revoicing his work in it that he completely did a, a different voice for the dubbing. <laughs> is that right? So it'll be Pacino going, you know, I'm, I'm Frank Serpico, and then it'll suddenly the dub will be going, "You crazy kid, what are you doing?" Is that right? right? And so, wow. and I for years I thought that though that was the proper version of Serpico, <laughs> right? And then. One night, and God bless, I hate to plug Channel 9, but they do have a great reputation for showing films uncut at a certain time of night. And yeah. finally, the first time I ever saw Serpico, the proper version of it was on Channel 9 at like midnight on a Friday wow. night about wow. 10 years ago. And um, that's pretty much all I have to say about Serpico. I know. <laughs> I love your dub version. I love it. I remember when Robocop was shown in oh, cinemas. Yeah. Do you remember that? Good movie. They cut it to get a, because it's an extremely violent film, yeah. Robocop, and they wanted to get the kids in, so they cut it down for a PG. Uh-oh. And I can't remember the scene exactly, but there's a scene where two blokes are bagging their boss in a toilet, oh, yeah. and the boss is in the cubicle listening to uh, them, and he yeah. comes Classic. out, and he goes, I remember when I was your age, I used to call my boss this, I used to call him that, and then he uses, like, obviously the third one was, like, really serious. I think it had been asshole, scumbag, oh. and worst of all, I called my boss, and then a completely different voice <laughs> just comes on and goes, Airhead. <laughs> it's like that episode of The Simpsons with Mr. Black. <laughs> we'll be back with more in a moment, but in the meantime... Uh, excuse me, sir, what do you like about Get This on Triple M? Do oh, that music that you don't know what you play? The monkey that what that chooses it? I like the um, talkback uh, precipice with the people that call in. 
things inside it. I like the constant uh, fister update that I like, the sizzle, constant sizzle, the confusing the references to Sneto Gero, Ben Kebley with his eating a sandwich on the program on it, and Tony uh, Martin uh, misidentifying the uh, Kelly Clarkson songs, Blocky Pube uh, attacking the reputation of Steve Gutenberg on the program. Many good contribution from the people. And of course, the Nickelback. My favorite is the testimonial from the people in the street just reading off a piece of paper. Is that it? What is it? Snetogel. It's just something we say on the show. I don't understand it. it. Comes up and who is the monkey? Yeah. Get this weekday mornings from nine on Triple M.